Hello, I'm Tawana Warner and I work in the Fayette County office. Um, I'm the sexual assault and stalking advocate. Today we're going to be talking about how older adults um, disclose uh, sexual assault. And also this month is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Well, in the past and now I've noticed that I'll have um, victims that will come in their later life and they'll disclose how they have been sexually assaulted and sometimes they won't tell anybody and this has happened to them as a younger adult um sometimes happens to them as a child they'll be sexual it'll start as sexual abuse and they won't disclose or tell anybody until they become an adult sometimes they, they'll do that because they are afraid the abuser will not um, will tell them that if they tell anybody that um, they'll hurt their family member or they will um, also hurt a, they'll hurt they'll hurt themselves they will um, they'll, they may kill the, they'll sit, the perpetrator will say they'll kill them um, also though they're also afraid that they won't believe them or the um, the victim don't know who to tell they don't know who to trust um, and they, they're just afraid in general. Also, um, I've had some victims that will say that um, they just, they'll keep it to themselves. They don't know that it is sexual abuse. They don't know what it is that's happening to them, so they don't know how to tell anybody. It's a generational thing. Um, it's passed down or either that is something that the perpetrator um, wants to do. Um, it ha sometimes it's just, it, it, nothing constitutes it. It's just something that that person just likes to do. Um, it's It could be anything. It could just be something that triggers that person. It's any unwanted sexual activity that involves something that you're uncomfortable with. Um, it doesn't have to just be one thing. It doesn't have, it could be any sexual object. It could be any object on that person's body. Um, sometimes people think that it's just um, sexual contact. Um, it's just sex, it's just a full blown sex. Sometimes it can be, um, it can, I mean, sometimes it can just be um, a kiss that leads to other things. And I will tell you this, last week at court, I was at court and I was um, doing a DVP hearing and I asked the person, I said, um, have you ever had unwanted sexual contact with your husband? And she was like, that's my husband. And I said, well, have you ever told him no? And she said, yeah. She said, but that's my husband. And I said, well, you, you that, that's still rape. You do know that. And she's like, no, it's not because that's my husband. I said, yes, it is. So even women who are being raped and then are married don't realize that you can tell your husband that that's no. And marital rape is still rape. Um, Most of the time, it's what's comfortable for you. So if you're in that sexual contact, with that person and most of the time um if you're enjoying that moment and if you get to that point where it's uncomfortable with you just tell that person that i'm 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 okay with this right now but if it gets to that point where you're feeling that it's uncomfortable just tell that person that um i'm uncomfortable with this and i don't want to go any further and that person if they respect you they love you and they they understand you then they're going to stop and they're going to say okay well that's fine and we don't have to go anymore and then whenever you get whenever you feel more comfortable the more you get to know each other then you can move to the next level and that will be okay so i mean to me that is respect as a person as a human being even with animals even with dogs they'll get to the point where they'll be playing with each other and then whenever they hear that yelp 
that other dog will leave the other dog alone and then they'll go off and then they'll come back and play again. And then if they hear the yelp, they'll leave each other alone. So, I mean, even animals have a respect for each other. Just like, I mean, we should as humans. Whenever you hear that, no, I'm, I'm done, stop, please leave me alone. I don't want to go any further. That should be it. And you should say, okay, I'm understanding, that's fine. We'll just stop right here. I would tell them that there's always someone there for you to come forward to, whether it be us as advocates, whether it is someone that's close to you, find someone that you trust, find someone that you know that loves you, um, find someone that you're close to. It may be your pastor, it may be the mother of the church. I mean, even if you're not spiritual, um, Find someone that, um, it may be, it may be someone at the hospital. I mean, you have people that's nurses at the hospital that you can tell they can call us and we can come out to you at the hospital. Um, find your best friend, find that person that you know, that's going to believe in you. Cause we do. I mean, we're not here to judge you. We're here to believe in you, but, um, regardless of what age it is, how old you are, if you're five years old to a hundred years old, where, where, wherever you are and you decide to disclose, we're gonna believe in you and we're gonna listen to you. So find that person that can listen to you. And um, it's not about judging you, it's about someone that's gonna listen to you. Sometimes as a person, as a human being, you have to stop and just listen. It's not about talking, it's about listening. And it's about, are you really listening? Or are you just hearing? Because I always tell my daughters that. Let listen, just sit and listen. You know how like when you go to the beach and I tell my kids, when you go to the beach, what do you, what, what, do, what are you hearing? Or what are you listening? We hear the waves, but what are the waves telling you? That's why people like to go to the beach. They like to listen to the waves. They don't like to hear the waves. They like to listen because it's calming and soothing. So whenever you come to an advocate, we like to listen to you. And that's why people like to come to, to an advocate because we hear and we listen to what you're saying and we believe in you. And they know that they come when they come when they come to us, we believe you and we're not judging you and you feel safe. And that's why they like to come. And you know what? It's I know that um I, I'm I'm a victim of um sexual abuse. Um and when I was able to disclose the first time I disclosed, that person as an adult didn't believe me. I actually got cussed at. Um, it hurt. But then when I had to go to court and disclose in court, that, that was embarrassing for me. It was very embarrassing. But I knew that I was, I knew what I disclosed was truthful. And then whenever the person that didn't believe me had to listen to the judge, and my perpetrator say that what was what was said was true. Then that person that didn't believe me started crying because it was the truth. And sometimes people don't like to hear the truth. And it's the fact that sometimes those people that don't like to hear the truth, that they don't, they don't believe you because it hurts them just as much as it hurts you. They don't want to believe that that perpetrator is the perpetrator. So sometimes that's the reason why people don't like to listen to you whenever they you are disclosing it. It hurts them sometimes just as much as it hurts you. So that's why sometimes you have to find somebody that, um, that when you disclose to, that they're able to listen to you. Because it's a, it's a difficult and very sensitive subject to disclose to, because it's private, it's sensitive, mm -hmm. it's hard, it's difficult. But, um, but sometimes, but it makes you stronger when you release it. It really does. Cause you're able to get it out and you're like, I did it. And I feel good about it, but it does hurt you. But just, but remember too, being a victim doesn't make you weak. It makes you strong. It really does. It makes you strong. And, um, it, like I said, I was, um, in my thirties when I had to, I had to, I had to disclose mine. And my and my perpetrator was a juvenile. So and I was I was being perpetrated on as in my sleep. I'm I'm, I'm 
I, I have seizures. So my medicine makes me sleep. And when I take my medicine, um, I don't wake up because I was trying some new medicine. So I don't wake up until um, my medicine wakes me up sometimes. So I was taking these new medicines and I'll be asleep, knocked out. So I was at first, I didn't believe what I was told in my, whenever the person told me what they were doing to me. Like, no, this is not true. This is not me. And on top of that, I'm an advocate. This is not happening to me, not me. I help other people. So then when I had to sit there and I had to think like, oh my gosh, this is really me. And then when I go to tell the person that I thought I could trust the most to just close it to, and then I got cussed at, that hurt me more. But um, the person I told after that, that I did disclose to, and they believed in me, that's what gave me the strength and the power to like, hey, I'm taking you to the the police department and you have to you have to do the police report because you gotta you gotta turn this person in you have to you have to so that, that you can get this person help and that's my main goal was to in my situation i had to get this person help i did i have to get this person help because this person is a young person and we have to make sure this person gets help so they don't do it to another person because we have to figure out his underlying problem and why he's doing this and that was my whole goal but um I was, like I said, I was an older adult and I had to disclose and I did disclose, but regardless of what age you are, um, it doesn't matter. You can do it. And when you do do it, it's going to make you feel better. But it's just the point is, the point is, is when you hold it in for so long and you carry that around, it eats you up. It does. And, um, but when you do disclose and you disclose and you find that one person that you can tell, um, they're gonna to cry too. It's gonna to be some tears because they're gonna ask you, why'd you hold it in for so long? Because they're gonna be like, why didn't you tell somebody? Why didn't you tell me? And they're gonna tell you, I didn't know how. And that's gonna be the first thing is, because first of all, they don't know how to deal with what happened to them. And the people around you love you, but they also said, I don't wanna hurt you because it may have been somebody that was in that family that this happened to. And that's usually what happens. My role is to be non-judgmental, mm -hmm. to always believe in them, um, regardless of I'm um, with them a day, a year, five years, um, it doesn't matter to me. I have some that may call me today and it, it may take them a while to sink in what they just did because you gotta understand that you have those mixed emotions that come up and then it just depends on what part of the journey they are in like what part of the system they came in like are we going to court have we filed a, a emergency protective order are we going to get a dvp are we um are we just getting um services to provide counseling with or are we going to be at, um, are we at the medical part? So there's all parts of the system that we may be meeting that client at. With a, and I call them a client or a survivor because sometimes we don't like to use the word victim. So it just depends on where that client is at. So um, there's many different stages, like a butterfly. So um, for me, um, I can't really answer that question all the way fully because it, like I said, it depends on what stages we're at. For me, I would love to be with them forever because I like to watch them grow. I like to watch them come in from day one and I like to leave and I like to watch them helping others. And then I see them and then they're referring people back to me and they're like, oh my goodness. Um, I was working with a way and I had these wonderful people there. And then next thing you know, they're referring people back to us. Or I see them, you know, doing, you know, helping other people. Or then, you know, um, or I'll see them going to school. And they're social, you know, they're going for social work. Or um, I'll see them getting clean. You know, they got off the drugs and they're getting clean now. And they went to rehab. And, um, you, I mean, I love to see the success stories. And, um, and I always tell them, you know, 
even if they do not get clean, sometimes you got to fall back off the horse to get back up because we all have a bad day. We all have a bad day. We have days I cry in the office because I've had, I see some bad cases. That's just rough. It's just rough. We're human. I said, but that doesn't make you a bad person. That just makes sometimes you don't have enough support. So I would tell them, call me, call me. And I have some clients I do call every day. I have a check on. I do. I'm like, hey, you doing all right this morning? Start our journey. So um, it just depends on where that client is in that in their journey, where we at, that um, I walk with them. I walk the journey as long as they allow me to.